Hi, and welcome to this Fornav Coffee Break. My name is René Brummel. I'm a product specialist at Fornav, and I will be your presenter today. As this Coffee Break is live, you can ask your questions via the GoToWebinar question window. We will answer them at the end of the Coffee Break. Today, we're going to get back order information on your Business Central invoices. To demonstrate getting back order information on your Business Central invoices, we will make changes to the sales invoice from the 4.5 customizable report pack. We'll we use the 4.5 ability to read data directly from the Business Central database to get back order information. We will not have to do any programming at all. The techniques we will demonstrate today are valid for any 4.5 report in any extension. To demonstrate getting back order information on your Business Central invoices, I'm going to use these steps. Prerequisites, what do I need to get going? In step two, I will inspect the data set. In step three, I will add back order information to my invoice header. In step four, I will add the back order lines. Let's start with the first step. Today, I will be getting back order information in a Business Central on-premise Docker installation with the Business Central 2021 Wave 1 release. I have installed the 4.5 customizable report pack and I have executed a step-by-step -step wizard from the assisted setup to get started. For some of the features I will demonstrate today, you need at least 4.5 version 6.0. Of course, everything I do today is also available on the Business Central cloud environment. I also have the 4.5 designer installed on my PC. The 4NAV designer can be downloaded from the 4NAV website. In Business Central, many tables are interrelated. In our case, we need to find the original order from a posted invoice. Since the posted sales invoice was created from an order, there should be a table relation. We just need to find it. So let's have a look at Business Central, where, of course, I need to log in again first. There we go, and in Business Central, I have a posted sales invoice that, of course, I've created before. And this posted sales invoice is uh, a part of an invoice for, uh, for, an existing or for an existing order. You will notice on this, uh, on this invoice, I've sold a bunch of computers. Uh, I've, I'm invoicing 10 and 13 of these, uh, but I know I've, uh, the client has ordered more. So I need to find the original order from the sales invoice and read the data from that original order in my sales invoice. So the order number can be found quite uh, quite easily. In uh, Business Central we have on, this, on the posted sales invoice, we have the order number right here. And if you want to know exactly what, uh, what field this is, from what extension, etc., uh, you can go to your help and support and inspect pages and data. And if you want to, feel, want to view fields from orders, want to view anything that has to do with an order, you can simply filter on order. And that will give you all of the, all of the order information. And you will notice right here that we have the order number, uh, field 44, and it's a field from the base application. So it should be available everywhere. So that's the, uh, that's the order. Let's have a look at the order in Business Central. So in my sales order list, I should be able to find order 1001, which is this one. And in the order, you will notice I have two items sold, uh, the two computers. And you will notice that I've sold 15 of the first and 27 of the second, uh, which are different quantities from, uh, from, the, uh, from the invoice. And if I scroll a little bit further, you will notice that my quantities shipped are 10 and 13 which match the, uh, the quantity on my invoice. So what I would want on my invoice is uh, a couple of lines saying uh, this first item, I still need to ship five and the second item, I still need to ship uh, a few more, 14. Look, I'm not that good, that good at calculating. Anyway, that's what I need to find on my, uh, on my sales invoice. Now we know how to get how to set the table relation to the original sales order. We can get the sales order information to place on our sales invoice report. Since we only want this information on the sales invoice, we won't edit the sales template today, uh, but the sales invoice instead. So to edit our sales invoice, 
let's go back and find our four and a half report list. Like I said, I'm working with a standard report today and I'm just going to create a new in, new layout for the invoice. Everything is uh, is completely standard, by the way. I've got no uh, no template, uh, no changes to the sales template any or, or anything. Uh, just a completely standard four and a half setup. So the first thing I want to do is I want to get the uh, sales order header information and I want to display that on my document header. Now the sales order header uh, is a single record and that has a one on one relation with my posted sales invoice. So I need to, uh, I should be able to use a record, uh, a, a JavaScript record in four and a half to get the related information to get the, to create the JavaScript record. I can find my report properties and open my uh, my records collection where I have the, the standard 4NF setup, uh, the company information, the 4NF setup and the 4NF legal conditions, translations. I will create a new, uh, a new record. Uh, I get the wizard and in the wizard I can find my table. The table I'm looking for today is the sales header table which is number 36. Then I need to tell for now what uh, what the link reference is, so where to get uh, the uh, the data to link the new sales header table to the posted sales invoice, and of course that's if I find my parents, I can find my uh, my header table, and the header table obviously contains the sales order, and then I need to find my link, and the standard link for now creates for us is last posting number set to sell to customer number that's not the one I want I want right now I want to set the number the sales uh, sales had a number to the order number field of course you, you can use a drill down but typing it is a lot quicker I'm going to hit OK and OK now this will get the sales header table from my uh, from my database the only problem is that the sales header table contains uh, not just the orders but it contains the uh, the invoices uh, uh, unposted credit notes etc etc so it uh, contains a lot more than just the orders and they could have the they could use the same numbers so I need to filter it on orders as well so I need to specify a where property and then a where property I'm going to say my document type is an order hit ok and ok so that gets the uh, the record from my database. Now, of course, I want to display the data on my uh, on my report. So I'm going to unhook my document header from the sales template. I'm going to find my uh, let's use the header first and the field extensions. Let's use the order number field from the uh, from the posted sales invoice header. And just to check if 4 gets the gets the correct record. Then from the sales header, our uh, order table, let's use the uh, the number table first, just to check if they match if that matches the uh, the order number in my posted sales invoice. And let's use something else. Let's grab some customer information. Let's grab the uh, build to customer name. And finally, I want to I want to use the amount. Grab the amount in my report. Let's make them the same size and align them all to the left. And let's make them yellow so the fields stand out a bit. I like to work with colors when I demonstrate reports because it makes it really easy to see what I've changed. Let's preview to see what we get. There we go. If I zoom in a little bit you will notice the order number that's from the posted sales invoice that matches the number from the sales invoice sales header that we get from the database. The bill to name is also correct but the amount is zero. And that's not good. I wanted to show the original order amount. 
Um, and that's because the amount is what we call a flow field. A flow field in Business Central is a field that is not an actual field in a database. It's a field that we need to calculate. So in order to be able to do that, uh, we can go back to the report properties, find our records property and our sales header. And I can add my calculated fields here. And if I drill down, I get a full list of all the fields that are flow fields. So not actual fields in a database. They need to be calculated. I'm using the amount, so I'm simply grabbing the amount. Hit OK and OK and preview again. And that calculates the original sales order amount for me. Finally, we want to show which items are still on back order and how many have been shipped. To do this, we can add the sales order lines as a data item to our invoice. So the difference between the sales order lines and the sales header is that for the sales header, we only need to get one, rec one record. We just need to get the sales order from the database. But from the sale for the sales order lines, we need to get many records from the database. And to do that, we can't use a record uh, because that just gets the first record in the, in, in the database. Uh, but we need to use a data item, and a data item is simply a list of uh, records that for now will display on the screen. I can simply drag the data item control into my report. That will ask me for the, uh, for the data item table. So let's type sales line. And like I said earlier, if you want to know which tables and which, uh, which numbers you are using, you can just open the page inspection and that will tell you exactly what you're using. Um, of course, I need to specify a data item link. That data item link is setting document number. That's the, uh, that's the order number to the order number field on the posted sales invoice header. Hit OK and OK. That will create a new data item for me. And by default, 4NAV places it at the bottom of the report. Uh, in this case, I want to move it up. until it is just underneath the, uh, the invoice lines. And like I did with the order, uh, with the sales order header, or the sales header, I also need to filter this for just the sales orders and not, uh, uh, not the quotes and invoices, etc. So I'm going to set a filter document type is going to be order once again. Now, after I've done that, I can add my data to my report. So I'm going to insert a header section and I will insert a body section. And on these, I will display some sales line stuff. Let's grab the number. I want the description and I'm selecting these whilst I've got the control key pressed, uh, which means I'm selecting multiple fields at the same time. And I want quantity shipped and I want quantity to ship. I'm going to drag these into my report. You will notice that will create a, uh, a table for me. Let's change some alignment. So everything looks all right once, uh, once we demonstrate. go with the yellow background again and of course I want my column headers and for that I can use my field captions I can do the same trick number description quantity shipped so many quantities here and quantity to ship use these create some spacing change my alignments make them bold and yellow now the only thing I want to do is I've set the uh, to use the quantity to ship from the sales order but the quantity to ship we saw on the sales order is empty because I don't have anything to ship in my in my inventory otherwise I would have shipped it and invoiced it already so the quantity to ship is something I need to calculate. And in order to calculate this, I can simply open my source expression. 
and I can add sales line quantity. So I want to get the original sales line quantity minus the sales line. dot quantity shipped. So the quantity that is still open is the sales line quantity minus the quantity that I've already shipped. Hit OK. And let's preview to see what this does. There we go. So I've got the uh, sales order stuff on my header, but now I also have my sales lines, my, my order lines, my original order lines, where I can see the quantity, uh, quantity shipped and the quantity to ship. And of course I can view anything from the sales order line. So I can also add the original quantity and the quantity shipped and the quantity invoiced, anything you could possibly want uh, from the sales, uh, from your sales order lines, you can display on your sales invoices. So let's recap what we just did. The first thing we did was to inspect our data set to see what the relation was between our posted sales invoice and the sales order. Once we found that, we could add the sales order information to our sales invoice report. Finally, we were able to add the order lines with the open quantities to our, to our invoice report. So thank you for listening to me so far. I can't see any questions in the, in the question window. If you do have any questions, uh, just type them in and I'll answer them before we end this webinar. And if there's no questions, I will end, uh, close the webinar right now. Um, if you want to know more about Fornav, please visit fornav.com, where you can also download the Fornav Designer. If you want to use Fornav in uh, Microsoft Business Central Cloud, you can install the customizable report pack from Microsoft App Source. If you want to watch uh, more videos about Fornaf, please visit our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash reports. And if you have any questions after watching this video, please email them to support at fornaf.com. And of course, we'll continue our Fornaf coffee breaks uh, for a full list of upcoming and recorded coffee breaks. Please visit fornaf.com slash coffee break. With that, I can't see any questions appearing. So thank you very much for listening to, listening to me today. And I will speak to you at the next coffee break. Goodbye.